Hello and welcome to our uh, D and D mini painting stream. Um, my dad should be joining shortly, but I'm gonna be working on this little house today. Probably finish this up, and we might work more on these river stuff. We've been working painting. Um. These are D&D minis that we use, paint and use in our D&D uh, stream, which is on Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern here on the Switch channel. Um, if you're interested in the figures that we're painting, we 3D print them all ourselves. And the designers can be found on our website, DysonDungeons.com, under Attributions, um, as well as all our previous D&D episodes. So, um, yeah, I'm just gonna get to it. If anyone has any questions, just feel free to toss them in chat. And I think, I've been thinking about what color to paint this house, and I'm currently leaning towards using this scarlet red. Um, because we don't really have a, a red house yet. We have a purple one, a green one, a yellow one, and my dad's painting a blue one over here, so I'm going to do a red house. What I'm doing here is, um, I'm trying to just get the borders in, then I can take a little bit easier, have a little bit easier time painting in the, uh, insides, and I don't have to worry about hitting the edge quite so much. So, by taking my time here and getting along the edge of the black I painted already. I can save myself more time later not having to redo art that I've already done. And that's my goal at least. Whether or not I'm successful? Uh, another question entirely.
Oh, I'm just taking my time. There's a lot of red to cover here, obviously. But, you know, if I get it right the first time, I don't have to clean it up later, which is always nice. But I'm sure there will be spots that I have to fix. bottom panels in. Next is this big uh, top panel. That'll be fun. Although it might actually be easier than the bottom ones in some regard. Because mostly there's just a lot of a lot to fill in. There's not a whole lot that I can generally screw up. Sort of lines along the edges is the secret. Getting this right. And this is a spot I know I'm going to get a couple mistakes on. Cause there's a lot of little crevices right up at the top here. Um, and I'm going to just know that I'm going to get a spot or two that I have to clean up later. It's no big deal. I'll just come in with a little spot of black here and there later. And it will cover it right up. Yeah, there's... Surprisingly, only really one spot on this side that got a little splash of red on the black. Which is better than I was expecting. edges of the triangle done. So what I'm gonna actually do, because there's a lot of surface area here, just uh, clean this brush off quick so it doesn't dry with too much paint in it. And um, take a bigger brush. This is a brush that I continually say I need to replace because it's old and broken and it's really lost a lot of its uh, usefulness, <laughs> but I keep not throwing it away. Okay. 
I'm going to start by building out my edges a little bit with a larger brush here. This will give me even more breathing room. And I'll have to be even less careful when I go to fill in. It's probably going to be a bit quiet today because it's Friday before Labor Day weekend. I'm guessing a lot of people are traveling or off doing something outside, something kind of fun. So I hope if anyone is watching that they're uh, going to have an enjoyable weekend. I'm running red here, so I'm just going to squeeze a little more in. side painted in my red here. I just have one, two, three more sides to go. Uh, that's sort of what it's gonna look like as it gets complete. I am probably gonna do a dark brown roof because I have sort of a wood cake roof. Um, haven't decided what color the door will be yet, but um, I'll just keep working my way around, clean off my large brush here because I won't won't be using it too terribly much for this next section. Two sections really. Because on the sides there's a lot of finite areas that I'll need to go around. I'm switching back to my finer brush. Not that it will focus. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do the technical stuff first. I didn't get quite as much primer on this section of the house as I wish I had. So hopefully the paint will take fairly well. But I might need to give it a second coat on the top part here. But it seems to be doing okay.
I'm gonna do the tricky part next, which will be these windows. Getting around them. Without creating too many problems. Because they're smack dab in the middle here and they got like this rounded top and things. It might be a little a little harder than a straight line. To not get too much paint where I don't want it. One of the things I like to do to sort of accomplish getting along an edge like this. Oops. Got a little spot in there. That's easily fixable. Um, I like to load my brush. Set it near the edge, but not on the edge. And then slowly push the brush in towards the edge where I want it to go. And that just helps me control control the brush a fair amount makes uh, makes it a little easier Fine. here on this window I put it about I don't know a millimeter out from where I want to be and then slide the brush in to the spot and I'll deliver the paint generally a bit more cleanly than if I tried to just set the brush right where I wanted it in the beginning. Hello Tesla. Okay, now to do the same thing with the next window. And so as you can see, I got my window surrounded here. It will um, be easier to avoid something like that in the future now that I've gotten the basic area around it covered. I don't have to go anywhere near it. You can come out. Not a kitty. get too much cat hair in my paint. So maybe you can stay off the table. No cat break. Good. 
Looks like I don't have any cat hair in my paint, though. Oh. That's not too bad. Going down along the edges now. I'm doing the window panels first. Just I don't know if I mess them up or not. And if I do, they'll dry a little faster. A little sooner, I should say. And I can fix them without having to wait quite as long. Spreading a little bit of this excess paint out. Sometimes I like to get it a little extra goopy on the brush to fill in some of the harder crevices, depending on the 3D print itself. Um, a lot of them have sort of this wood texture to them, and I want to make sure that the uh, inside that I don't have little gray primer crevices left after it dries. Oh. I'll put sometimes I'll put a little extra paint on my brush to make sure it gets in and then spread it out over the unpainted areas after. I went a little too far down in here, so I'll have to cover that up later with some black. That is my mistake. I wasn't differentiating two pieces quite as well as I should have been. That 
besides coming along. Almost got the borders done on all of my panels. One more to go on this side. Okay, so I at least have the edges done on all of these. And my next step is to go in and just take my time. And fill in the rest of the panel. And these panels all have little wood grains in them, so I find going, if I want to get the paint in properly into the areas that I want and have it go where I want, I go sort of the side to side pattern. That really uh, just helps get it in a little easier, going, going with the grain in a sense. Gets it into those grooves a little better. It's getting, I'm close to halfway done with all the red. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna look at it.
two panels of four. And for these, I'm going to break out my bigger brush. Just to make it a little quicker and easier. Picks up a lot more paint. I just have to be a little more careful about where I start and stop. And I'm working from the edges in, which I think just sort of helps a little bit. Helps me control the brush. To do on this side. I'm actually currently using my right hand here as a or hand rest to help me stabilize a little bit. There's a lot of little tricks you can do when you're painting. Just sort of Give yourself a slightly steadier, um, steadier hand, um, such as have a, some sort of wrist rest like I'm currently doing. It can be something simple like your hand, or something more complicated. In like the Renaissance and stuff, the oil painters would actually have a stick that they would um, hold against the side of the canvas and they could rest their hand on it and really carefully get those oil painting fine detail stabilize their hand quite a bit um, something I like to do if I'm holding the piece like this is um, I'll have my pinky out and I'll do it like that and just have a pinky on what I'm painting because it sort of joins the hand together with the item. So if I shake one way while holding it, everything moves rather than just the piece under the brush. Um, there's lots of tips and tricks that you can sort of like, I don't have the most stable hands in the world. Um, you know, I don't have, like, a tremor or anything, but, you know, I get a little shake here and there when I'm painting. And even if you have a much more shaky hand, it's very viable to, uh, do model painting if you just sort of learn what works best for you. So I have half of the red panels done. I'm going to go around and do this side next before I tackle the back. And I think if I... Yeah, it's on dry paint and uh, roof. I can set it down like that. And let it be drying on the opposite side.
So I'm switching back to my little brush here. And it's really just the same as the other side. Ex almost exactly the same, actually. So. Not too much to worry about here, just no matter of getting it done. <sighs> I got some red paint on my finger at some point. It's always good to be aware if you got paint on your fingers, either wash it off right away or be okay with sometimes handling your model and uh, getting paint where you don't want it because it will come off your fingers onto your model. And I would normally go wash my hands, but I don't want to, you know, leave the camera alone. So. I'm going to uh, try and remember that I have it there. Some red paint on my finger. And to not touch anything with my ring finger. bit more scarlet paint. Oops. There we go. Since the other side is drying, I'm not gonna handle the model too much to get the windows yet. I'm gonna work on the edge, the edges of the panels first, so I can uh, avoid messing with the other side while it's drying too much. Because I'm gonna need to reorient and angle my model a fair amount while I'm painting the windows. will also give me a little more breathing room when it comes time to painting the middle. And I always like to have that little bit of extra space to not mess up where I can find it. There we go. Okay, next panel.
checking how my other side's drying. Okay, onward. Two. The next channel. One more panel to do, and then I will be tackling the windows. One thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm using this little brush, and I still have the windows to do. I'm going to pull in and fill in some of these edges, just to give myself more breathing space when I hit the middle. Next is the windows, and these are the trickier part. Just like last side. I want to try and get all the way around without getting too much on the black.
Now with these windows, I'm mostly just filling them in as I go here. Because there's not a lot of space that I can use the larger brush effectively. So it's a little easier actually. It's a little time consuming. Let's just get this whole panel filled in. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining. I have been working on this house. <laughs> um, I hopefully haven't made, I've only made a few mistakes in the painting. Um, hopefully not too many outside of painting. Just a couple spots here I'm going to have to touch up, but uh, yeah. I don't think I've made any mistakes today outside of that, hopefully. I'll find out later, I'm sure. I'm working on this building. I have two sides painted and I'm uh, getting on with this one. Oh. Yeah, I feel like in general, bangs are one of those things best left to professionals. <laughs> They're so temperamental. You know, I went through the phase, like most people, where I tried bangs, found they really didn't work, and then had to grow out of them. But there are some lucky people, like possibly you, that bangs work, which is very lucky. I think I just feel like you need the exact right sort of base for bangs to work. And unfortunately, I don't have that. Oh, yeah. Well, if you do, I'll try and check it out. I'm I'm very bad at remembering to do social media in general. But I do try to hop in and check our, our Discord periodically when I don't get distracted, which is all the time. <laughs> I'm very easily distracted. I have a little bit of ADD stuff going on. sure what happened to my dad. He was supposed to join me today, but I think he um, forgot, maybe. Quite possible. I thought it was Wednesday yesterday, so. I could easily see that same thing happening to him. Okay, just two little panels left on this side. I'm gonna switch to my larger brush for finishing those just to get it done a little quicker.
last panel on this side. Yeah, she's upstairs. We've been working pretty diligently the last couple weeks on preparing our little uh, YouTube series on how to play D&D. Because we kept getting asked about how you do something, so we've been writing, filming, and producing... Uh, the DM Dailies series that so she I think right now was editing some of it. Which I can take quite a bit of focus. Grabbing a couple spots where the red didn't quite take the focus I wanted it to. I'm holding down the fort down here. <laughs> well, I'm, uh... I think I'm the only one who remembered that there was a stream today. <laughs> Alright. On to the back. But I feel like we're getting pretty close with our DM dailies. Oh, it takes on a lot of work. Oh. One last side to do. Luckily, there's no windows involved in this one. And this side. Those are a little bit of a pain to get around. I'm just gonna go around the edges here. Try and cover as much as I can before I go in through the center. Oh, are you off for, uh, Labor Day? Labor Day weekend. We're sort of taking that off as well. Um, partially because we figure there's not going to be a whole lot of people watching. Oh, you're in the UK now. Right, because you're in college. So you flew from Maine to the UK. That must have been quite a flight. Yeah, Labor Day, that's a US only sort of thing, isn't it? Everyone knows that's like May Day. Basically, everywhere else in the world. That, like, 
the U.S. is so super communist. Oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, do what's right for you and what you need to do. Uh, I don't think there's any anything wrong with I, either going to college or dropping out, you know, depends on whatever you personally need or have to do sometimes. Yeah, sometimes life just doesn't let you uh, do what you want when you want it, but, you know, there's a lot of people, myself included, who went back to school later and finished, you know, if they, if you want to do college and you end up having to wait a little while or go do something else before then, there's really no reason you can't go back pretty much at any point in your life. So... You know, it's not, it can feel like a big deal, but, you know, it's something that can be overcome. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just hope that you get through whatever you're going through and things are better for it in the future. As <sighs> yeah, sometimes things get rough and you just have to ride it out except that it's going to be hard for a little while. But, you know, as long as you get through it, you can always recover. Generally. I, you know, I'm kind of just giving generic statements here, because I... not quite sure what else I can provide, but... I just hope things that turn out well. But in the meantime, I hope I'm at least provide, able to provide a distraction Maybe some relaxation while you cut, cut bangs. to done with the red, which is nice. This weekend for Labor Day, 
weekend. We have off, and we're going to a uh, local baseball game, I think. I'm I'm so so on baseball. Oh jeez. Well, you know, I don't... Yeah, I don't know what to say. That's... That's extremely tough. And, um... You know, just, uh... Try and make the... The best of it. And do what makes you happy. Um... And, you know, I don't know, just, uh, do what you can. I find that, you know, I don't have any real experience with a situation like that, but I just hope that you can, uh, I hope you get through it, and I hope that you can find what joy you can in the meantime. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have anything super uplifting or positive to say, but that it's a situation that just sort of, that sucks. And it's really bad. And I hope that you, uh, that things improve. I really do. Because I like to chat with you. And, yeah. <laughs> you work in a maid cafe. Well, yeah, we'll move on from that. In, so, in, somewhere in the UK, there's, like, the I know they have those, like, in Japan and stuff. Is there a maid cafe in the UK? I didn't know that was a thing there. Like, where you dress up in, like, a maid uniform. That's pretty adorable. <laughs> well, it must be kind of fun getting to dress up like that at work. I've never, you know, I live in the U.S., obviously, so I've never really seen anything like that. I don't think we have any here. Maybe in the large cities. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm in Michigan. We don't really see anything like that, but are they, like, in the... in, like, New York and L.A. and stuff? I'm guessing larger populations, there's more stuff like that. But, you know, theme restaurants are always fun. There's a place in Canada we go to that has a... Oh, we're in California. Texas, huh? I, I mean, California makes sense to me, but... I wouldn't expect Texas to have made cafes. Um... Interesting. Yeah, yeah. There's a cat cafe that I've been to before, where they, you know, where they have the cat in the, in the cafe proper. But that's about the only themed cafe I've ever been to. I saw in Japan they have a owl cafe, which I think is really awesome, with owls in it, that I would love to visit. But, someday. <laughs> I really like owls, though. So. Yeah, I know. They have, well, they have, like, a... Everything is themed, too. Like, 
There's so many themed restaurants and cafes and all sorts of stuff. So working at a maid cafe though, like, are the clients weird about it? <laughs> or are they just like, this is fun? I feel like you could easily get some weirdos. Although it's, and it's in the UK, so I don't know if that helps or hurts. Okay. Okay, one last panel to do this one here. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I assume, I mean, the assumption is always like, you know, the thin French maid look. So that's pretty cool though, that they're, that they have that representation there. I'm glad that you get a lot of compliments because that's really cool that you're doing that. And you deserve to get those compliments, so. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that that I wish we had more of in the area, but we're in a fairly uh, conservative <laughs> Christian and Dutch region around here, so we don't have a lot of cool, neat things like that. Although the city nearby is getting better for neat things like that. Oh. But that sounds like a really fun job, actually. I mean, like, if you're gonna be in the service industry, it's way better. Like, I worked at a coffee shop for years, and, you know, you just get people who aren't angry all the time, because either they're, they're not going, they're not coming in for fun. They're coming in to get their, uh, you know, caffeine. So. That sounds like it would be way more fun to work at than most, most places, honestly. Real close now with this red. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, I hope... I don't know, I hope that does... I don't know, does that get annoying, or is it... Just sort of... I know there's a lot of, like, general curiosity that people get when they, like, see something that they're not... that they don't usually see or weren't expecting to see. I don't know. Does that get frustrating for you? Getting asked things like that? Or is it just sort of you're used to it kind of situation? Oh, well, yeah. At least, as long as they're asking nicely, I guess that's something. I feel like sometimes people... think... I, sometimes I feel like questions like that can get overwhelming, because it's like, even if they ask nice, they're... and they think they're like, yeah, I'm asking very respectfully, and they are. You're kind of like, yeah, you're also the... 50th person today who's asked me that and I'm just sort of maybe a little tired of answering it and it's not like you personally did something but you know try and consider that <laughs> that you get asked about something by every person um that's happened with me and stuff on other issues that aren't you know, health-related, but, like, yeah. It's better than, like, having someone be aggressive or a uh, jerk about something. It's, I don't know. I try to be nice about that sort of thing when I can, but sometimes uh, it can be a lot. I have the red in. Well, that's nice. Yeah. It's always nice when people are like, wow, I love your makeup, or wow, I love your hair, or whatever, your wig. And, like, they're just like, I'm really curious because I want that, too. So, I'm going to let that dry a little, and I'm going to get along the edges of the roof here. You know, there's probably something pretty nice about going the wig route, because you can just be like, this is the hair I want today, rather than, like, being like, well... I have the same hair every time, and I can do like the one, the three things with it. Although I have been, like Lexi and I have been talking about getting our hair dyed soon. So, I don't know, that might be a little fun. Um, I haven't dyed my hair since high school. Which, yeah, I've done, I've actually done dark blue back in high school, which is longer than I like to pretend it is, um, ago. And I do like dark blue a lot. Um, I think Lexi wants to go in, like, the pink, purple, lavender range. And I've been thinking either, like, the dark blue, dark purple, or black direction myself but that's my personal preference so i might undertake dark blue it's that recommendation the last time i did uh well it wasn't super dark blue it was more like uh 
this kind of blue the last time I did. Blue, but I could do like a darker, an even darker blue. But it has been some time since I dyed my hair. Partially because I, I work from home and I basically never go out, so... I, uh, don't really have any reason other than for my own personal. Oh, I'll have to check it out after the stream. Is this the one you cut the bangs on? to see it once I'm off here I'll remote I will use my perfect recall which I don't have at all to uh check the discard um although I guess I could oh you fix the bangs that's good I'm pulling out my phone here and <laughs> I know and just just so I can open discord because I will forget Oh, that's a really cool wig. I love the color. The color, the ribbons, those are really cool. And, you know, I'm glad you fixed the bangs. They're, uh, they look great. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think that's sort of the color range. Maybe a little more purple. I'm not sure that Lexi's thinking about dyeing her hair, actually. She wants to go... Well, I think, if we're honest, I think she wants to go sort of an Amity route from Owl House. Oh, yeah, I know. That's always, like, the... That's another thing, is, like... Man, if you dye your hair and it doesn't go with your your skin color quite right, like, then you have to re it. Yeah, I have, uh, oh, Amity sticker on my phone. We watched a lot of it. Although it's been rough being on, on break. I think, I think she wants to go an Amity route in her hair color. That's part of it. And she's finally in a non-office situation where she doesn't feel like she doesn't, like she can't dye her hair, so. I'm pretty sure, yeah. We have to make an appointment with a hairdresser sometime soon. Do that is that because is it like an issue getting it over in the UK? Because of uh, zone zone zoning, I don't know what the word is. Region region locking. That's the word. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's one I've been meaning to watch, is Gravity Falls. It's one of those, like, when I get the time, I'll finally get around to watch, I'll finally watch it situation. But. 
We would watch uh, Owl House every Saturday. Oh. Yeah, I think that that wig color, if it was a little more purple, a little darker, it'd be pretty close to the Amity color. I do hate that when you're like, oh, I really want to watch this show with someone, and then they just like, they're like, oh, this is a good show, and watch it. Oh, is there like a, a difficult part, or like a, or some, there's uh, some shows like, that I, there's actually a show I, I never finished, I don't know if you've ever watched. But it's a older show, um, Gilmore Girls. And I got to a point where I'm like, okay, I know the main character is going to break up with this person. Technically, I know that that happens. But I'm going to stop watching the show while they're really happy. And, and it'll be just fine. I've done that before. Well, when I get around to watching Gravity Falls, I won't sure I'll understand what that means. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll watch the first episode this weekend when... If I get some downtime. Then I will understand what... Shmebok? Shmebolot? I don't know. I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong. Shemebulak. Shemebulak? Sounds like a, like a necromancer. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I think I'll try and watch some of that this weekend. I think other than... Other than going to like a little family event for Labor Day, I don't... I don't think we have too terribly much that should get in the way. Hopefully. But I am awful with planning, which is why I rely heavily on a calendar.
this roof pillar then, and I... Yeah, I thought I just messed it up. Oh really? Yeah, so you, those are bows from a pair of socks that you put on the wing? Well, they look like they belong there. Got like uh, some strong... Um, like anime goth lolita vibes to it. Especially with the bows. Oh, see, there you go. Well, you accomplished it perfectly, because that's 100% what I got from it. Yeah, I haven't watched anime in some time. I used to be way more into it before, back when I had more free time. <laughs> um, but, you know, I always did like the, aest the aesthetic a lot, so. It's a very good look. That you have going on with that wig. Probably goes quite well with the maid dress too, honestly, because that's sort of. Um... Oh yeah, it, it's a little too fluffy. I'm guessing it. It did look like it was very voluminous, so. I can see that. Yeah, I, I mean, maid dress and goth Lolita goes pretty hand in hand. <laughs> so it took a lot of work to get it all uh, on matted, I'm guessing. Was it matted from your sister, or was it matted from, like, the shipping and packaging? Oh, covered in nail polish as well, so I'm guessing that was the little sister. Then. That is uh, advice I've never heard before, but advice that I think makes a lot of sense when you, uh, the first time you hear it. Don't trust a small child with a wig. <laughs> Be like, okay, I'm gonna throw this wig away. You can play with it, but uh, yeah. I guess that's probably asking for trouble. Depends on how you define small child, right? Hey. Okay. I think I need to decide what color the door is on this. Does she, uh, get spoiled by the roommate a bit?
Maybe I'll do this turquoise. I've been wanting to use it. That sucks. Yeah, I don't... As far as siblings go, I have an older brother, and that's it, so... Other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of, uh, Experience with the, uh... The sibling issues. It was basically a we were really good friends. My brother got to high school, decided that he needed to be cool and that I was a detriment to that. And then he sort of just oh geez, ten siblings, yeah. And they're all younger, you're the oldest of ten of eleven kids, it sounds like. My brother, uh, decided I was a detriment to him being cool. And we, he basically just stopped interacting with me altogether. You know, that was kind of rough. But, you know, we're, we're, we talk occasionally now. He's, it's not like we're angry at each other or anything. But there was definitely some distance put in there. Oldest of ten. Yeah, you have Lexi beat there. She has... She only has five siblings. And... So you're easily double that. And, you know, there's two step-siblings. One is older than her, one's younger. And then there's, uh... Two half sisters and a brother um, of various age ranges. But, you know, like her half sisters were young enough that in high school she was uh, changing their diapers for them. Like 10, 12 years younger. Or, or even more than that, maybe. I'm bad with dates, so. Well, that sounds like you're probably... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like... Um, like, okay, well, your parents were either very... active or very Catholic. Right? coming from a Catholic family, sort of an ongoing joke, with like some of our cousins and things like that. Oh, both? See, that's a recipe for, for disaster. <laughs> one aunt who had seven kids and they were all 
all of their names started with J. So that wasn't confusing at all. Having seven cousins, all of whose names started with J. So while this dries, I'm just going to be putting in some of the darker stone on the foundation here. I think, amazingly, there's only two in there that are correct for the for their names. There's a lot more J names. Uh, no, no Jasmine. There's so many J names that I never really thought about it that hard before. I guess J was a good a good uh letter to go with in that regard because they could have, they probably could have had like 10 more kids and been good based on that. Wow, that, that must have been very confusing. <laughs> it was probably like, um, I don't know if sometimes it depends on what time, like. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see? You, you have to name your, you know, there's cursed names that, you know, some people might want to name their kid that then. It's a good thing to know. If you're in a Catholic neighborhood. <laughs> These are the cursed names. <laughs> There, uh, yeah, I always found that was funny, then there was, like, certain names just got spread everywhere, I think. I'm trying to think, what were the names when I was going, growing up, that were, like, I, I feel like there's a ton of Ashleys. So any of those spellings are cursed. There's not, like, a... There's not like a, you know, safe spelling of any of those names. I assume not, you know. It's more about the phonetic. <laughs> it's like a, you know, a spell chant, if you say that. If you if you say the name out loud, you turn gay. <laughs> I 
I have a cousin named Daniel. Oh, well, you know, that's good. I wonder, I wonder what's gonna happen to him. Well, maybe I'll, I'll have to ask him if he's gay. Of some type, you know. He hasn't told me he is, but maybe. Secretly. Although, if he goes by Dan instead of Daniel, does that, like, affect it in any way? The curse. <laughs> I bet they did. That's pretty funny. Yeah, he's solidly in the second category there. Yeah, he definitely is a cheesy Midwest dad that throws town barbecues. I've seen the slow devil de evolution into it over time. Exactly. Usually, I, I usually see him at family events, so it's usually more like a jeans and a collared shirt affair. But there is a ponytail involved sometimes. Oh. You know. I feel like that plays into it. Exactly, yeah. At least for, for the parties. A little more modest.
But he's a pretty nice guy, so... <laughs> It's just very funny to me to see him. Yeah, that's definitely more where where I'm at with how I'll show up, but you know. We don't really have anyone in my family who has any problem with that, so it's just sort of par for the course. I feel like you probably should go with the rainbow wig if you have one to go with, like... I mean... You know, that's actually not a bad option either, like... That can be a pretty awesome look all in and of itself. Having so many options is pretty nice. But, you know, green and pink are already in the rainbow, so if, you, if you're having trouble deciding, you can just go for all of the above with rainbow. Or, so I'd say either rainbow, rainbow or bald are probably the ways to go. So it's like, uh, that like, what's the, what's it called? We have just like that tiny bit of, uh, hair. Where it's really, uh, super, super duper close. Yeah. That's cool. Warhammer 40k or Warhammer Fantasy. Awesome. What, do you know what, uh, like Space Marines, Tyranids, Necrons? You know what, a uh, group, uh, army, they're going with. I did Warhammer Fantasy back in the day with Lizard Men, which is where I started doing model painting. So they're very bad because I was young. I like, um, in 40k, I like the Sisters of Battle and the humans. I like the, uh, the tower pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really easy to do. Um, I'm very glad we have a 3D printer for things like these, because, uh, yeah. The, they just sort of rapidly become expensive. Like, for our dungeon tiles, 
<laughs> if we were buying something like Dwarven Forge, even unpainted, we probably would have spent two or two to four thousand dollars getting what we have gotten for way, way, way tiny fraction of that. You know, because just a roll of, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not 40,000 years in the future, it's $40,000 startup cost, right? <laughs> but mini painting can be a ton of fun. Then you can get into like modding them and stuff, like taking parts off some. I think it's kit bashing. Are you sort of like take pieces and glue them, attach them to other pieces to create sort of a whole new thing. That's like unique. It can be pretty pretty awesome. I just thought the 40k orcs are pretty cool. Are they like fungus? So when you kill them, their spores like spread over the planet and grow even more orcs. Yeah, there's like in fantasy, my brother did high elves, my dad did orcs, and I did uh, lizard people. Anniversary birthday retirement. That's quite a combo. I assume it'll probably be a fairly large party then. You know what? Yeah, if you're if you're like find enjoyment and being, you know, out and proud around them rather than like dealing with like feeling like my I have one family member who's not so cool and we just sort of avoid them all together. Um, but, you know, if you're confident and don't give a crap about what they think and you can just piss them off, like, more power to you. Because that can be its own kind of fun. I am envious of that because I always struggle with like confrontation of any sort. <laughs> Chaos and chaps often go hand in hand. Oh, 
you know, I don't think it's too much of a typo. Chaps, I'm just thinking, like, what would a goth cowboy look like, like, as an aesthetic? Alright, one more side to do on the stone down here. And I think, since it's a little after five, once I get through the stones on this side, I will probably let this dry for touch-ups later, clean-ups later. And, uh, get, get ready for dinner. I think that's 
probably good. I'm gonna let that sit. And there's still some wet spots, so that'll be good to dry while I'm off. But next time I should be able to finish up this house. I just have to do some cleanup on it and everything like that. So I'm gonna go see what happened to my dad since he didn't show up for the stream. And uh get ready for dinner. So thanks for coming. It was nice chatting with you. And uh we're off this weekend for Labor Day, but I'll be back on Tuesday for more painting. So I hope things go well. I hope you uh, have a good time at the party being uh, chaotic. And uh, I will hopefully see you later. All right.